It's a beautiful sunny day out here. It's not too cold. We're gonna hike some of these trails and see if we can find some wildlife. Massive. Yeah, it is. It is definitely slippery right there. And right there. for next Christmas. What do you think? Oh, thanks. Just what I've always wanted. <laughs> that was a big piece.
I could just sit out here all day and like whale watch. Eagle. I really could watch the sunset from here. It would probably go, you can't even see Augustine today, actually. Did you notice that? Yeah, well, I could barely see it over top of the clouds, but now that was on the top of it. Yeah. We had an absolutely beautiful hike today. It wasn't too bad of a trail. There was a couple of spots that were a little steep, but the view down here was totally worth it and we got to see some wildlife. So now it's time to head back up before the sun sets. so low I gotta bend over. But there's so much snow it's 
fairly tall now. Perfect. Today we're working on a project that I have been super excited about and that is building a birdhouse and a bat box. If you saw our videos from over the summer, there were a lot of mosquitoes, which is common for Alaska, but we want to help combat that, especially in our open areas when we're outside working on projects. So we had several viewers suggest making birdhouses for the swallows, which are migratory birds that come up here and stay all summer, and also bat boxes. And we do have little brown bats in this area and we want to encourage both the swallows and and the bats to come in and eat up those mosquitoes. We did see some over the summer, so we know that they're here. It could take two to three years for the bats to want to stay here, but it's better to get started now and give them an opportunity all summer to find the bat box. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on building this. We are making it out of a piece of salvaged lumber that we found in the old shed that we tore down on this property. The previous homesteader had sawmilled a bunch of lumber and it was covered in a tarp under there, so it was still good. It's not great for building with, but it's good for small projects. So we thought it would be perfect to build the birdhouse and bat box out of it. We used the table saw to cut the 16th inch deep grooves into the wood and this will be the back of the bat box and we decided to do that instead of using wire mesh or plastic mesh because we don't want the bats to hurt their feet when they're grabbing onto the box and the wood will give them a more natural surface to hold onto.
house and the bat box are done and I'm really happy with how they turned out. I think they look great for using all salvaged materials. We are gonna go ahead and get these hung up. I know that the swallows and the bats won't be back out until the spring or the summer, but it's good to prep now. It was a nice quick project that we could do on a winter day. Really, really like how that turned out. Yeah. Can't wait for bats to move in. Yeah, I think we just need to cut out a beam on the sawmill and like extend it up, yeah. get it a little bit higher. That way they don't get confused and run into the fencing. Yeah. I don't know that they would run into the fencing. I mean, some people mount these right on the side of their home. Yeah. But I'd rather them not get hurt by the fence. So yeah. We'll probably just in the spring or who knows, we might have time soon. We'll come out and we'll raise it up a little bit, I think. Yeah. And then it'll be up to like the 10, 15 feet like where it's supposed to be. Yeah. In the open. Yeah. I think we'll it extend off. it like three or four feet. That way it gets them away from the fence. Yeah. And it'll be perfect. Yep. I like it. Another project for a brighter day. I don't know what's in there, bud. Only you do. I can't get to it. You dig for it. the lynx tracks did come through here and they went up that hill so the lynx is definitely in this area somewhere So we've had trail cameras running on this property ever since we bought it. So about a full year now, we've caught a lot of different animals on with regular pictures. We, the trail cameras that we have running right now are the cellular style. So they send you a message whenever they take a picture. And we've gotten a lot of pictures of moose. We've gotten a lot of pictures of rabbits, some ermine. Uh, one picture of a suspected lynx. We thought it was a lynx, but we weren't sure. But now recently, since the snow is on the ground, we're able to see a lot more tracks out here. And we actually came across some lynx tracks very close to where we're living on the property. And it kind of motivated us to try and get out a couple of, of these older cameras that we used back in Maryland for deer hunting primarily. They're pretty old. I mean, I've had them for probably close to 10 years. So they're not really great cameras, but we have them set for video footage and we're gonna try and capture the lynx. So we're gonna set them up on a couple of busy rabbit trails and in a couple of the areas where we've spotted lynx tracks. And hopefully we'll be able to capture it on film because they're very elusive. So, you know, we probably don't have a chance of seeing it in person to be able to film it. It would be really nice and we're gonna try, but finding them would be almost impossible.
been hearing coyotes at nighttime out right around this area. They're yipping and stuff, but we haven't seen them. And we haven't seen any tracks here either. Maybe they're maybe they don't come around because of our dogs. But we would like to try and see if we can get some of them on camera too. You never know what you're gonna catch on these things. Apparently there's wolves in the area too, but we haven't seen any sign of them or heard them. All right, I think we're good. You ready to go look for some chaga? Yep. All right, let's go. How much easier it is to walk in the winter time when the snow is up above all this brush. So we're over here at the chaga, or what we believe might be chaga. When we were out here picking berries, we had a lot of comments that said that this was not a burl and that this was chaga. Still looks like a burl to us. There's a lot of bark on the outside, but we're going to cut into it and see what it is. Should have an orangish color inside. If it's good chaga, but I don't know, this kind of feels like I'm cutting wood, <laughs> like I'm cutting a tree. Nope. It's wood. It's a burl. It's just a burl. Well, I feel bad for cutting that off of there now. Look Unless like if just this little bit is chaga, that would be a very small amount. You know what I mean? But there's definitely 100% of burl there. Yep. That's what I thought. It really had me second guessing myself because, you know, we had three people in the comments say that it probably is chaga. Except it's definitely not. Like I said, unless it's like this tiny little bit of stuff here is chaga, but I don't think so. I think it's just old bark. Yeah. Dark. Yeah, it doesn't look orange. It looks more like a reddish brown. We're kind of at a loss here. We don't know if this small outer part is a burl that's just deformed or is it actually chaga? We're pretty unfamiliar with chaga. We've never harvested it before and we didn't have it in our area, so we don't know. And it looks too brown. It doesn't look bright orange like chaga when you look up chaga online, like good, what good harvestable chaga should be. Well, and the other side has bark on it when you flip it over. Yeah. Yeah, usually it's more black. 
usually the chaga looks black when it's on trees in the forest, but... Unfortunately, we did not get any chaga this time, but that's okay. We will continue to look for it as we go on our hikes, and hopefully we'll be able to harvest some soon. Thank you for watching, and we will see you on the next video.